All right. Hi, everyone. I'm immigration lawyer John Kasrabi. Thank you for joining me on the Immigration Lawyers Podcast. It's great. I'm sorry, not the Immigration Lawyers Podcast. So used to saying that. Thank you for joining for our live Q&A uh, in uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm on uh, Facebook, JQK Law Firm. On TikTok, the username is Immigration Lawyer John. And as people trickle in, I'd be happy to just ask some general questions about what's going on in immigration law, what the situation is with everything. Uh, it's the extent possible, obviously. And then uh, from there, uh, you know, see what we can do and, and discuss it. Just remember, this is all educational. So what we're doing here is uh, just general information to help guide you through the process. As I know, it's very confusing. A lot of people have a hard time, especially the times we're going through right now where everything is shut down and we're getting, you know, different kinds of information. I'm sure if you go to websites, you hear different kinds of things people are asking. It's very inconsistent. So I try to do, do this daily, 5 p.m. Pacific on Facebook and on TikTok for people to see it. And if you want to catch the video of it, you could see it on YouTube. I post it there along with clips on various social media for JQK Law Firm, my law firm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and YouTube again. Uh, so you catch that information there. And I do it say, you know, Monday through Friday just to get the, you know, the information out because I get these questions a lot from people. So as people start to trickle in, I'm going to just talk about some stuff I heard today, some problems people had today. Um, and it's all over the place. Not the same problems usually, but uh, in different little views. Uh, you know, people want to file for citizenship. They think they can't file for citizenship because, you know, the immigration department shut down or something like that. But that's not the case. You could file for citizenship. Eventually, you're going to do a, a fingerprinting appointment, and that fingerprinting appointment is not working right now. And that's a problem, but it doesn't mean you can't file the case and they won't get started with it. It's just delays getting the background checks done on your case. On the other end, uh, and also the interview, as well as uh, if you are going to do uh, O ceremony once you're approved. Uh, the same thing with marriage cases. You know, you can start those in the U.S. If they're overseas, you can start those. But the problem is, eventually, there's an embassy interview, and uh, that becomes a problem when you can't, you know, attend an interview and to get the visa. So those are the kind of stuff people are dealing with um, that comes up a lot. The other question that comes up a lot is about unemployment insurance. So a lot of people, unfortunately, have lost their jobs, and the question comes up: Can I get unemployment insurance? Is that allowed? Well, that's a complicated question. First of all, it depends on the rules for your state. So you have to look at that. With regards to the immigration part, if you're a, you know, a U.S. person, as a U.S. citizen, you can get it. It's not a problem. But if you have a case pending for a spouse or a family member, if you're unemployed, that becomes problematic because an unemployed person cannot financially sponsor uh, their foreign spouse or foreign relative. So a joint sponsor may be needed. In the immigration service, you know, it's NBC National Visa Center or the Immigration Service, USCIS, might not like that and could look into that. And this is one of the focuses of President Trump's administration is a focus on the earnings people have. Now, if you're here on like a, a temporary work visa, a lot of them are dependent on a job. So if you apply for unemployment, that means you've lost your job, which also means you lost your visa. So, uh, you know, you might, if you do file for unemployment, that's essentially saying lost your job. So some people are getting furloughed that may or may not count as being employed. Uh, it's very complicated and unknown system that's happening because uh, this whole coronavirus thing is so rare that the immigration laws weren't really designed with this in mind. So it's this weird place where we're all trying to figure out what's going on. But if you are on a work visa, definitely consult with an immigration lawyer in private to see what's going on in your case. But if you have a, you know, like a marriage case pending or if you have a green card and, you're, and a lot of people are worrying, can I get unemployment if I'm going to file for U.S. citizenship later? Um, well, that is, uh, yet this, it won't be a problem for citizenship as long as you're honest in the application, don't lie. So a question I frequently also get right now, Shah Hashmi asks is, when is it going to reopen? So there's different things that everything, as I just talked about right now, everything is open. They're just not doing interviews. USCIS, the organization in the United States that does the interviews, they've said in June 4th they're going to open. We'll see if that happens or not. It just depends on what's going on with them. And there's a big backup of cases, so who knows how long it'll take till your case comes up. And with the embassies, it's really just depending on the Department of State and the specific embassy, whichever country it is and whatever the situation is. So, so I'm guessing if it's a country that's hit really hard, like Italy with the coronavirus, it might open later. But if you're in a country that hasn't been affected by it, it might open sooner. But it's a judgment call that the people in power are going to make. But right now, USCIS has said, and that's USCIS is the immigration office in the United States, They've said that June 4th is when they're going to reopen. You can always check USCIS.gov. That's a website for the Immigration Service in the United States, and they give updated information there. Definitely check that out and what they say there. 
Um, but we'll see, you know, if things are bad, then it'll, it'll be bad. That's, that's all we can say. Uh, in the meantime, you can file your cases. They are accepting mailed in cases in the lockbox. So that's definitely possible. And that's definitely something you should look at. You shouldn't delay uh, in filing a case if it's appropriate. There's no reason to do something like that. So look, for those joining in right now, if you had some quick questions, let me know. We could get into discussions about that. SF Dan, Asim, America, HF. USFG, a lot of stuff going on there. But thank you for joining. I'm immigration lawyer Jonathan Srabi. Let me know where you're joining from, what kind of case or issues you have. I'd be happy to have our daily discussion here just to talk about this stuff a little bit. And thanks for people on Facebook for joining as well. It's good seeing you all. Uh, but I love uh, the TikTok group. It's great talking with you all and, and sharing it with the community. So, you know, as I talk about what kind of cases could, are still open to filing, you know, I'm filing a fiance visa case this week. I'm filing an adjustment of status case. So it's a green card holder who came here uh, with his wife on a tourist trip. Um, and then, you know, they can't go back home because they shut down the airports back home. And they're waiting months and months and months. And it's not opening. So I said, okay, we'll just apply for the green card here. We're going to do that. I also have what's called the intra-company transfer, a guy who's uh, coming from overseas to come and work here. So I seem to say, sir, when they ask evidence, how much chance to prove the case? So it's not possible to answer that question. It's kind of like saying, you know, I have a cough, am I sick or I have coronavirus? It's like, I don't know how to test you. When they ask for evidence, it depends on what it is. Sometimes people spell their name wrong and they say, okay, please give us the correct name. And that's what, easy correction. But then sometimes they don't believe your relationship is real and they're accusing you of fraud. In that kind of case, you know, chance of approval, I don't know. I don't know anything about you and your case and who the officer is and what they're dealing with. So you need to have a consultation with a lawyer. You probably shouldn't have responded to that request for evidence without having a lawyer review it at the very least uh, to see what's in there uh, because mistakes now could lead to denials really quickly. Uh, but uh, a lawyer would need to know exactly what you submitted, what the questions were that the USCIS the office or, or maybe embassy even uh, asked for to see if you provided what they asked for. And even if what they asked for is appropriate, sometimes they ask for stuff that is really inappropriate for them to look into and we could challenge them on that, we do. Uh, but also what kind of documents to send with a translation is proper. There's a million and one things that could go wrong in this kind of situation. That's where my help comes into play. Uh, Harman, Bud, Bud, Jatsy, Happy USA, Brenda, Dan, thank you for joining. Let me know if you have an immigration case pending and what kind of stuff you're dealing with, what kind of worries you have. Estrella, thank you for joining. Estrella Aguira, thank you for joining as well. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was saying earlier, I have the typical family-based cases, marriage, fiance cases. I have, you know, extension of status, people here on tourist visas, can't go back home, don't really want to risk getting on a plane. So we're filing for extension. Say, listen, these people have the funds to support themselves here. They haven't violated their status. They just need a couple more months because they don't really want to get on a plane. It's, it's scary, you know, um, and to just let them hang out. They have family members here that could help them. Um, and so we'll see what the government says. You know, sometimes you file a case and they don't, it seems like they don't even look at it and they approve it. And sometimes they go out of their way to find problems that don't exist. So that's one of the issues that exists with the immigration service. It's, there's some inconsistency in how things are dealt with. It really depends on which officer that you got and, and how they're going to deal with the case. And so that's why it's really hard to judge and give chances because one officer might be really cool about stuff and one officer might be really strict. So we don't know. Uh, Jatsi says, how long does it take for USCIS to prove your pardon if the spouse is fixing your status? So by pardon, I think you mean a waiver. And a waiver is if you violated immigration laws in the past and you ask your forgiveness. There is no exact timetable. Uh, it depends on however long they want to do it. Um, and six months or a year may be good, but it depends on what you're doing, what kind of waiver it is, what you've done wrong. Um, so it, when you filed it, uh, so there's just a lot going on. If you filed the waiver with the uh, adjustment of status, well, you have to wait for your interview as well for them to talk with you. But if you filed a separate, what's called an I-601A, uh, that can be six months a year on average to get approved after filing. So there's a lot going on there. This is always like, as the previous question, I, I try to provide some information and guidance on that, but uh, in general, I need to see what happened. Uh, but it, timelines are not, are, are not fixed to say how long it takes. The officers could take however much they want. And sometimes you have to sue them actually to get them to work. There's sometimes where it takes years for them to actually get going on a case and do something. And so you have to file a lawsuit and say, hey, you know, get your act together. It's not appropriate. Uh, and they don't move until that, until you file the lawsuit. So uh, that could happen. Yeah, it's, it's a nasty situation, but it's case by case specific. Uh, Pena Vimbusa, Adrian, Angel, user 317. Thank you all for joining. Uh, let me know if you got any specific immigration case or issues. I'm here to do a Q&A and, and provide some answers here every every weekday, uh, 5 p.m., 5 to 5.30. 
and uh, just talking uh, to see what's going on and, and to help guide you as these things are moving uh, pretty frequently, pretty quickly. So, so one thing that happened the other day or yesterday was there's this group called the National Visa Center. And so when you um, start a case in the U.S. and eventually uh, the, the person who wants to get a, a green card has to go to an embassy interview, they deal with an organization called the National Visa Center. And their job is to collect a lot of documents. And the last couple of years, they've been going through a modernization program where they're doing everything online. And so one thing that they just announced is they're not accepting anything by paper anymore. Everything has to be digital. So that's like a new thing. And there's, there's more to that. But Arif says, uh, if LPR stayed 182 days outside of states, is he break continuous residence? Yes. Um, if you spend 182 days, um, that's a break of the continuous residence. And when you file for citizenship, um, there's an assumption that it's broken. Um, you have to be able to overcome it to say, you know, uh, I didn't break it. I was actually residing here then it depends on the evidence that you submit for citizenship. So continuous residence, let me back it up a little bit. But to finish that, it um, depends on the evidence you submit, how the officer wants to deal with it, how many times you've broken residency, all the likes you have to deal with that. But when you file for US citizenship, you have to be in the United States a fixed amount of time. There's also other regulations you have to complete. But one of the requirements is the continuous residence period, which means you're not supposed to live outside or be outside the United States for too long, or else, uh, or else that resets the time you have to, 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 to go through to get a green card. So typically, to citizenship. So typically, uh, if you have a green card for five years, you can start the process for citizenship. However, you know, in that five years, you have to have spent uh, more than half the time in the United States, and at the same time, not been outside the United States for more than six months, or not have multiple trips of four or five months outside the United States. You really have to show that your life was in the United States, and any time you spent outside was these temporary kind of vacation kind of things, but you're really living in the United States and you're not breaking your continuous residence. So if you were 182 days outside the United States, they look at that and say, you were outside for more than six months, you broke continuous residence. Then it's on you to explain how you did not break continuous residence, how you are really living in America, how do you have a house here, and how you do that is showing documents. You have a lease agreement, you have a car, you have a job, you have family members, you have utility bills, you go to the library and check out books, you pay taxes, you vote, uh, and, and it, there's a lot more things just to show, no, my life is here. It was a temporary situation, I went out. Maybe you're out for four months uh, just to see some family members, have a good time, and then coronavirus hit, and then you know you didn't want to get on a plane, there might be explanation. And then at the end of the day, it's up to the officer at the M at the USCIS interview and their judgment if they think that you uh, you know broke your continuous residence. So there's only so much the limits of what an attorney can do or documents can do. It goes in the hands of an officer at the immigration service. And if they don't want to prove it, you can then appeal it. It's called N336 for a trial to happen within USCIS for them to review and analyze it. Um, this more fees and more time. And uh, in the worst case scenario, you may be able to file a lawsuit, but at that time, so much time has passed, you may be able to just reset the clock and uh, you know do, do a whole new application for citizenship. It really depends on the facts of the situation. And you have to analyze to see if it's worth it to go through all this or not. So if you had a break, I would say, you know, contact my office. My email is info at jqklaw.com. So we could review your, your travel history and we could get all the dates because we need all the dates for the last five years and then break down each one, how long they were, get explanations of why you're out, what can we show that you're living in the United States. And uh, I've had at times where people were out a lot, and but they said, okay. And it really, again, depends on the officer you deal with. Some are, are more cool with it than rest. But under President Trump's administration, things have gotten harder. They're looking over their shoulder. They're trying to give them a tough time on this kind of stuff. So um, you gotta be prepared for the worst. And just, but if you want US citizenship, give it a shot. The main thing is that we want to make sure if you apply, if the case, the citizenship case is denied, you know, we'll file again. It's not a big deal. But we don't want them to then go back and, and take away your green card. So that's why it, consultation for citizenship is very important to review the underlying case, to go through your history. And I, I have, when I get a citizenship case, we have an initial consultation first. And then we go, okay, what were you doing before you came to the United States? How did you get your work visa originally? What did you say in those applications? Uh, how did you get your green card? What did you see in those applications? And uh, what have you done since then? And what kind of interactions have you had with law enforcement, with other people, paying taxes, um, you know, voting mistakenly, or all this kind of stuff we check because we don't want to file for citizenship and have the officer all of a sudden notice something and say, well, not only are we denying you citizenship, we're also going to kick you out of the country. So you're going to immigration court. We're going to take the green card away. We're going to ship you out. And that's the last thing we want to do. That's why we have to be very protective of the green card and make sure 
uh, there's no major issues. And I had a, a case like this recently uh, where someone came, it seemed like an easy case, but I said, listen, give me, find your green card application from five years ago, let's look at it. And there was one error in there, and that one error could potentially cause them to be deported. That was just a mistake, his lawyer didn't file it right, but that's his fault. And so I'm like, if we file for citizenship, they're gonna say, oh, there's one error is here, you lied to us. And the guy's like, it's such a minor error, but if officer wants to, they could, they could kick him out of the country. So I don't recommend file for citizenship, um, there are waivers that could come up depending on different scenarios. So I said, for example, if you get married, have a kid here or something like that, that'll solve things. Uh, but as it is right now, I, you can't file because that, that's going to be a problem. Um, so, um, I mean, I, it's up to them to file, but I would just let them know what comes down the line. Uh, Hayat says, my wife came to the United States at January 21st, but she's still waiting for her green card. Any reason? Um, I'm assuming so. I'm assuming your wife came after getting an immigrant visa approved. So when a green card marriage case happens and they go to the embassy and the embassy approves it, they come to the United States and the green card is supposed to come in the mail a few weeks later, along with their social security number. But it doesn't always work that way. Well, first of all, after your immigrant visa is approved at the embassy, there's a $220 fee that you have to pay uh, the USCIS. And make sure you pay that before you enter the United States. If you pay it after you enter, there will be delays. Okay, that's first thing, pay that, and, and that's that. Uh, secondly, sometimes it takes longer. I've seen cases where it takes, I had a guy came in on a green card lottery, diversity visa lottery. It took 10 months for him to get the green card. Very frustrating, um, but uh, it happens. But first of all, yeah, you want to make sure you pay the fee. Secondly, make sure check the addresses you provided were correct. Um, you know, third, you know, contact USCIS, potentially talk with them, see what's going on. Fourth, maybe contact your congressperson. Uh, and, uh, you know, if need be, go to the Social Security office and get your Social Security number uh, based on the immigrant visa stamp of your passport. You might have to haggle with them to get that. Not every person in the Social Security office understands that. But that green card stamp in your passport, the immigrant visa stamp, once you enter the United States, the border officer stamps on that, that is considered a green card. It could be used as a green card and, and proof of work authorization. You could travel with that for a year. So uh, be mindful of that, you know, although the green card is not here, you can use that to travel just like a green card. Now, if they find a job, not every employer understands that, and that becomes a problem. Uh, but you could do that, and so it's something uh, to be mindful for when these uh, green cards take a delay, have a delay to actually be shipped out and sent to your house. Uh, Bataru Andri, hi to you too as well. Do you have an immigration question or issue? Let me know. So, um, yeah, this pops up a lot when... Um, these green card delay scams are very frustrating and it happens at all the time. So uh, you're welcome. So I, I see it and it's very frustrating. I know uh, sometimes you need to travel, but keep in mind, yeah, that the immigrant visa standard passport is good for traveling, it's good for work. Um, so that'll hold you over until they figure it out. A lot of times the post office loses it. And so the immigration department will say, well, we sent it and the post office says we delivered it and they didn't, but the immigration office will, will believe the post office and so in those kind of cases, you have to, unfortunately, file for I-90, ask for a renewal for a lost green card, and pay the filing fee, and then wait, you know, three, six, nine months for a new green card to be issued. So it sucks. Uh, but that's just something that happens. And I would, I would say it happens two or three percent of the time. It's a lot. Uh, Nasir says, I'm waiting for my I-485 to get approved since September. Uh, first of all, that's, that's not that's a normal timeline. So um, that's... That, the, so depending on which field office you're going through, it could be much longer than this. But second of all, I don't know what kind of case you have. For example, if you have a case, an I-485 is an application for adjustment of status, filing for a green card from within the United States. So if you file for a green card with the United States, first it goes to the centralized location, um, they do initial review, then they send it out to a local office for where you live, and they do another review, and then they approve it. Now, each local office has different timelines of how they do stuff. Some are faster, some are slower. Some may take three to six months, some may take one to two years. Uh, and so these problems happen. Sometimes it goes longer and they have to file that lawsuit. Uh, but uh, it's September till now, it's not a problem. And some green card cases require you to do an in-person interview. And right now they shut down the in-person interviews. Because of that, uh, there's gonna be a lot of delays. So if you have an in-person interview, until you do that, you can't get approved in, in most cases. They are waiving this requirement for some employment-based cases, so that might be there. Uh, but at the same time, if you are doing an employment-based case, the, the timelines of employment cases got really messed up in March, so huge delays came up. So without knowing more about your case and your background and all that kind of stuff, it's hard for me to judge and give you an understanding of it. But in general, September is not a bad time frame. And it says, uh, 
I have my F2A adjustment of status applications pending and biometrics not done yet will delay overall process. Yeah, obviously. So an F2A is a spouse of a green card holder case. I mean, someone who's married to a green card holder in the United States files for a green card. Right now, they shut down. First, you have to do a biometrics, a fingerprinting and a photo thing before they could approve the case because those are, um, you know, security measures. Uh, but uh, at the same time, they, they're, they're, they're shutting down the interviews until June. So there's automatically a huge delay because a lot of people's cases are not finishing. So you're in line to, uh, behind those people to have their interviews. So yeah, there's going to be delays in the process. It is what it is, but just be patient. Hopefully you file for your work permit in the meantime. So you get that work permit may not be approved until uh, you do your fingerprints. So that's a delay right there, unfortunately. Um, but it depends. For example, if you had a work visa before you file for a green card, they may already have your fingerprints in the system and they can use that again. For example, if you had OPT, this is for student visa holders who had work authorization. They did a fingerprinting appointment already and that may be able to help. So there's a lot of nuances to this we gotta see, um, but just expect delays, it's, it, is, it is what it is. Uh, thank you for everyone new who's joining. We got a lot of people joining the group. Susie, Saudi, user 573, Jatu, Deep Singh. Uh, it's a pleasure to help and discuss all this stuff with you. Um, and, and these are typical problems, which you guys are talking about. This is just something that pops up all the time. And the only thing I can say really is patience, unless it's been a long, long delay. Sometimes it's like, you know, years of delay, people come to me and they should have talked to a lawyer much sooner, but that's when you go into lawsuits and, and force the government or contact congressperson or try to send letters directly to them just to do whatever you can to, you know, push the case forward because uh, the, these are problems that emerge. So uh, we have another 10 minutes uh, in the live Q and A. If you have some questions, please let me know now. Uh, so, because I'm, I'm gonna cut off new questions uh, pretty soon. But overall, uh, people filing for green cards in the United States, uh, there's delays there. And people who are going overseas too. Uh, first of all, the embassies are shut down as a delay. The travel ban that President Trump put in is gonna delay things for a lot of cases. Uh, and in, in general, there's things are backed up, slowed down, understaffed. So there's a lot of patience. And this is one thing that people even now call me every day uh, two or three times at least I get asked a day of phone calls. How long is this case going to take? And uh, they just like, I have one quick question. How long is it going to take? Well, have you seen, you've seen, you're watching this, you see how long it takes to describe the situation. Um, if someone came to me a year ago and said, how long does it take? And I took a fixed time and then coronavirus happened. Trump travel ban happened. This happened. The country had a revolution. All this stuff happens. Um, so it, it, you don't know. Now, Deep Singh says, marriage case, how apply? That's a big thing. We need to send email my office and we schedule a consultation with you and your spouse. Uh, that's too broad to be able to answer here. I might have I might have jumped into a little bit in a second, but Jatin has a question. Says my interview was scheduled on March 26. How much time will it take to reschedule my interview? Uh, again, that's impossible to answer because uh, first they need to reopen. There's thousands of people like yourself who are rescheduled. It's up to the local office to schedule it and then put it in their calendar and stuff. So this is an internal USCIS situation issue, um, or if you're overseas, the embassy situation, um, for them to reschedule stuff, it's outside my hand, it's in the government's hand and how they reschedule stuff. You just have to be patient. That's the key word is patience in all this. So when you do a marriage case, a uh, gentleman asked before, how does a marriage case work? There's two avenues to a marriage case. One is if the foreign person is already within the United States, enter lawfully, and one is, uh, or if, it gets complicated. Just say, let's just say if they're in the United States or if they're outside the United States. If they're in the United States and they enter lawfully and they have status at time filing, there's nuances and exceptions to all this stuff. They can file for adjustment of status, a green card obligation in the United States. If there's violations, they're going to have to leave the United States and, and do it outside the United States green card processing. That's called consular processing. And also need to request a waiver too in many cases. But if you're outside, then um, you, you go to the embassy and come here. The first step is always to file for I-130 petition for alien relative to say you're a real couple. If you're in the United States, you may be able to file the green card application with the petition at the same time, maybe, maybe not, depending on the case. If you're overseas, you first file the petition. Once that's approved, then you do the embassy processing. Once that's approved, you come to the United States. That's very simplified uh, view of it. Uh, there's a lot more going on and each case is different, a lot of exceptions, but I just wanna give a general idea, you either a file for it in the United States or overseas, depending on your case and what's going on, there's a thousand and one little things that could be different. 
that can make a case, uh, you know, stand out differently. So that's why uh, as we have to really talk about it, have a half an hour to hour conversation, if not more, to review your background. Because right now, for example, uh, President Trump started something called the public charge rule. The public charge rule does a deep analysis of all you and your spouse or you and the foreign person's financial background, um, bankruptcies, and what kind of uh, health they have, insurance they have, all this different kind of stuff. Um, to see what kind of person they are before they get approved. This didn't exist before. Before, you just have to show that the U.S. person sponsoring makes enough money, and it's not that much money to make. Now they do hardcore analysis because they're trying to stop people from being able to come to the United States. So it's an easy way for them to find excuses uh, to really hit your case and, and really give you a tough time. And that's why uh, in these kind of cases, uh, we have to do analysis. Now, if you haven't already, um, you know, add, uh, go to Instagram, my Instagram. If you're on TikTok, just click on the link above. They'll have my YouTube page, JQK Law Firm, and my Instagram page, JQK Law Firm. I post samples of my approvals there, tidbits, notes, information, guidance um, that you can get uh, that I haven't been doing on TikTok in particular, which I haven't done it as much. Uh, user 458 says citizenship. Uh, what about citizenship? <laughs> you can apply if your case is appropriate. There are delays right now because they've shut down interviews and old ceremonies and fingerprinting. But if you're appropriate to do citizenship, then you might as well start it now and have your place in line. And guys, that'll be providing full sentences to help me better understand what kind of questions you're asking. But Zisu, Mosi, Stars, thank you for joining as well. We only got a couple more minutes uh, before the video goes out and, and we'll do it again tomorrow, 5 to 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. On TikTok, it's Immigration Lawyer John. On Facebook, it's JQK Law Firm. A video of this will be posted on the YouTube page for JQK Law Firm. You catch it there. Molson says, hi, sir. You have any information about pending asylum application in New York State? Um, do I have any information? I mean, there's your question doesn't make sense. Um, you just, it's pending, you know, that is what it is. Um, user 458, should I apply or not apply because I was charged for shoplifting for $12? I have to see the actual charges and the conviction record, how long it was, if you got probation or not. So user 458, 100% schedule a consultation time with a lawyer in your, your local area. If you want to do a, a consultation, you can always contact my office, info at jqklaw.com. Some cases require that an attorney be with you at the interview. Uh, if you're not in the West Coast, uh, which I, I, I travel to myself, maybe a local attorney is better. But if you want my opinion, just send me an email. We can schedule a consultation. ZCU says, if a visa expires, can you marry a citizen to get a green card? Um, if you're in the United States and your status expires, not the visa, it doesn't matter if the visa expires, but if your status expires and you marry a citizen, uh, it's okay. Uh, there's an exception where if you overstay, and you marry a U.S. citizen, they don't, they don't mind it. But uh, we got to know more about that specific scenario and what happened. Honey Dillon says, USCIS is open for results or are they temporarily closed also? No, USCIS is only closed for in-person operations, uh, you know, because of the coronavirus. So USCIS won't do interviews, won't do biometrics, won't do oath ceremonies, unless there's an exception they could pull out there or, or there's a lawsuit for it. Um, but uh, they are issuing decisions. I'm getting people with work permits. I'm getting approval notices. I'm getting requests for evidence. I'm getting all of the above. Um, so if you have a case, uh, it's fine. Sometimes it takes a while if there's a delay and that's what you're worried about. Deep Singh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for joining the, the thing. Azim, thank you so much. Uh, this is my blue suit uh, that I wear. <laughs> I got the magic tie. It looks a little darker in the video, uh, at least in the, of the different cameras here in this one video. It looks a little darker. But thank you for joining again. Uh, user 458, thank you. God bless. God bless you as well. Molson says, people did not get their interview who filed their case before 2017. So Molson, if I think you're talking about asylum. Uh, you know, some asylum cases take two, three, four years to have their interview. They're really backed up right now. Uh, if you really have an urgent need to do your interview, you could file a lawsuit against USCIS to hurry the process up. Uh, but other than that, um, some people file their case. Right now, they're closed. They're not doing interviews. But let's say that wasn't the case. There are cases where people file an asylum case and within two or three months, they have their interview. It's having more and more under President Trump where they have a last in, first out kind of system that they've instituted. Uh, but um, it is what it is. I mean, it's a, there's a lot more people. The growth of asylum filings has been tremendous in the last couple of years. So they just don't have enough to be able to handle uh, this kind of caseload. Jad asks, does requests for reconsider to Colorado for a perm can help to certify perm if they give all the verification? 
Uh, Jad, that's a very case specific question. You probably have your employer has an immigration attorney helping them with the case. Please consult and talk with them. If you want to get a private opinion, a second opinion, then email my office. There's just a lot going on there that uh, either me or one of my colleagues I could send you to has to review. I wouldn't be able to answer such a specific uh, question here. Uh, Jatin says, should I apply for EAD after 150 days or 180 days in asylum case? Well, in asylum, if you have an asylum case pending, you could have filed for an EAD, filed the application form I-765 150 days after filing. You should do that soon. President Trump's administration is trying to get rid of that timeline. Um, and so uh, it's 150 days for asylum case to file for a work authorization if it's pending. Uh, Moazin says, my question answer, please. Um, Moazin, uh, you had to ask, ask your question first. I haven't seen your question. Moazin, you're welcome. Thanks for joining. Moazin, if you're going to ask, ask right now because we only got a minute left or else uh, please join us tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific and we'll get into it again. I guess this might be our last question. Sadie asks, I'm waiting for my green card since January. Is USA still working on that? Uh, it depends on what you mean by waiting for a green card and where you're on the process. Uh, they're still working on cases, but it's, it, there's a lot more information I would need to know about your case to be able to even start answering that question. There's a lot of unknowns there. Uh, if you like, join tomorrow, be more specific, uh, or uh, email me and we can schedule a consultation. Look at what's going on uh, to see if there's anything particular that stands out uh, in your case. Uh, but other than that, we'll be able to help. Mostin asks, sir, where's your office or any contact details? Well, um, if you Mostin, if you click on TikTok on the top, it has a, a link to my website in my newsletter. Uh, you can contact me at uh, and also, uh, there's, uh, you know, my, all my contact info. I'm located in Los Angeles, uh, but I take cases from across the world. It's not a problem. Parviz on, on Facebook. Thank you so much, brother. Good to hear from you. Uh, and so, uh, Saadi asked, she's already been interviewed. Uh, sometimes it takes a while. You no, know, it is what it is. Each case is different. Sometimes you do a green card interview and it still lags. If you feel, if it goes you know, four or six months, then you really got to push them. But just from January, you know, May is coming. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, but uh, I would need some more information about your case, but most likely you have to wait or, you know, write letters to USCIS, get your congressperson involved if these, these kind of delays or a uh, worse file a lawsuit. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I, just join me tomorrow and we could uh, discuss stuff against 5 p.m. Pacific. TikTok channel is Immigration Lawyer John, J-O-A Chen. And, uh, you know, we got some questions there, but we're done for today. God bless everybody. Have a good one. Stay safe. Bye-bye.